What's going on, people? Welcome to United View. Welcome to the Morning View. Welcome to our show where we go through the latest goings on at Manchester United, the latest hot topics, the latest rumours, the latest news, the latest reports out there. Happy 27th of March, man. On our midweek hump day. It's hump day, as they say. Hump day. Um, the day where you, you know, build up to the middle of the week. You might have had work, this, that and the other. Bit annoying. And you get over the hump and then you're on your way down to the end of the week when you can start to uh, look forward to football again. Look forward to the end of the week, spending time with family, going out, doing whatever you're doing. So it is hump day. And guess what as well? Guess what? what? We said it. We called it Kobe effing mm. Mainu. Mm. Man of the match. Man of the match. There's reasons why England didn't win. We'll get into that. But man of the match. Solid. But the biggest story that came out yesterday, and you know David Ornstein's been talking about this off the back of what Mark Ogden was talking about at ESPN, um, <sighs> is this Gary O'Neill thing. You, you look, we get that we get the Southgate thing, and we'll be discussing that, and we're like, yeah, the same. And then Gary O'Neill's name just 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 comes up, and we're like, what on earth is this? So there's a yeah. lot to get into. Um, Danny Luciano straight off the bat says, um, day four of asking Flex to check my lookalike post. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Danny <laughs> Luciano, you disgrace you cheeks. I, I like hope the post is good. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Well, hope, it's not it, well, for all of the build-ups that's gone to it, I hope it's yeah. I hope it's worth it. You know? I forgot to say, sorry, Daniel Sean, I forgot to respond. Um, basically, it's KG. He's watching Blood, Daniel was, right. and it's um, KG's in the background in Blood, and then there's a police officer mm -hmm. um, who's sorting out this problem, and he's like, "It looks this depth." He's like, "Tell me, this doesn't look like Flex," and it doesn't look like me at all. Right. I don't think it does, but right. it's not like a oh my god, I can't. It's not one of those, but I just don't think it looks like me. So, Daniel, there... I will say you are a disgrace and cheat. Who was the lookalike for you that KG used to always bring up? Uh... Oh, I can't remember the guy's name. But there was someone that, don't want to let me know in the chat, there was someone that they were like, it looks, it looks exactly like Flex. He's in like the OTT shows or whatever. But someone will let me know. I, I know they will let me know. But um, not, not an ageing... Elderly gerbil, no, Chris. But, yeah, but there was definitely there was. I remember, I'd, but I didn't know him like anyway. But I went, oh, he does look like Flex. Wasn't he like some coach or something like that? Maybe. Uh, I forget. I They'll let know. me know. In the... Yeah, I don't. Know. Jason says it was some manager. Yeah, I swear, I swear it was like someone. No. Someone let me know in the chat. They'll That's let me yeah. know. Danny yeah. Luchar says, "Wow, I really thought I had something there." Yeah, not for me, man. Not for me. Not for me, bro. Like, I'm not going to lie. 500 people watching straight off the bat. 73 likes in there. Let's get that up. Let's get to 250. You guys know the magic number. Daniel Luciano also says, oh, and I tagged you. Expect you to check it too. Right, so, um, yeah, it. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, right. Gary O'Neill, because someone just said, um, we're turning our nose up at Gary O'Neill. Do people not watch football, et cetera, et cetera. What's the story here? What is it? Well, the story is an interesting one, a very interesting mm. one, because... If you just read the headline, you would maybe think it yeah. means one thing. But when you read the article, it kind of maybe means something else. So this comes from Mark Ogden, who, by the way, has been loving the this could be Eric Ten Hag's replacement articles over the last yeah, week has. or so. He's done the whole list of them. He was one of the people that wrote about Gareth Southgate uh, last week as well. But he has said that Manchester United want to speak to Wolverhampton Wanderers head coach Gary O'Neill about a role in a potential new coaching setup at Old Trafford, sources have told ESPN. Now, if you think that's a very way, a weird way to phrase it, it's on purpose how he has phrased that. It continues by saying, with Sir Jim Ratcliffe's Ineos group now in charge of football operations at United following the completion of their purchase of a 27% stake in the club in February, sources have said that the new regime, led by Ineos Director of Sports, Sir Dave Brailsford, are attempting to build a new coaching structure led by a head coach. So you think, right, Gary O'Neill, is he going to be this head coach in this new structure? Continues by saying, and while no final decision has been made on Eric Ten Hag's future as manager, sources have told ESPN that United have already assessed England manager Gareth Southgate, yeah, Bry uh, Brighton boss Roberto De Zerbi, and Brentford's Thomas Frank as potential successors. This is the key part, Flex. Sources have told ESPN that the 40-year-old has been aware, made aware of United's interest, with senior figures from the club expressing a desire to discuss his intentions. Sources have confirmed United's interest in O'Neill to ESPN, although the role they may be prepared to offer is not known. 
Aside from assessing managerial options, sources have said United are also looking at bolstering their entire coaching team. So, and he's a good coach. He's a he's, he's a, good a, coach. He's a very good coach. We'll, coach. we'll get to that in a we'll get to yeah. that in a second. But so it's a bit. I, th I think it's a bit naughty. It's a bit a bit it's a bit of a naughty article. Yeah, there because he's, yeah, it kind of you you see the headline. Ineos want to talk to Gary O'Neill over a job in the new management structure at Manchester United. You think, well, he's a head coach at Wolves, a Premier League club. Are they suggesting they want him to be the new head coach? And you sort of read through all of it and they say, well, we don't know that. We, we, we're saying that they might want him to be involved because, of course, prior to becoming the Brighton manager, uh, Brighton, the B Bournemouth manager, sorry, get my South Coast clubs mixed up, uh, the Bournemouth manager, um, he was a backroom staff guy, wasn't he? You know, mm -hmm. he was he was person on the coaching team. So yeah, he got the job. Okay, yeah. Well. So the sort of, I guess what they're hinting at is perhaps they would be interested in him being a coach at United or like an assistant manager, which yeah. then when you look into it and go, he's got a Premier League head coach job. He is, where are Wolves in the league? Are they like eighth or something? Yeah, like nice seventh? Right. Like, so they're doing, they're pushing to try and get in the Europa Conference League next season. Like, there's no way he would accept. Yeah, when well, you just go back to being the side <laughs> a coach. Again. Like, yeah, yeah, they're ninth in the it's, league. It's a strange, it's a really strange story. So, six points behind know. us, mate. <laughs> yeah, like, again, he's, he's done a, he did a really good job at Bournemouth last season when nobody thought he would, you know, after they got absolutely smashed by like Liverpool, Scott Parker, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and they were in the midst of a takeover then as well. So, it was a difficult job, did really well, kept him up. Then gets into this, uh, gets sacked by no fault of his own. They just, yeah, we, everyone was and, like, they shouldn't have done that. Yeah, exactly. New person comes in and just goes, nope, we want to go in a different direction. So he gets the sack and everyone's like, that's really unfortunate. Goes to Wolves in the most difficult of circumstances where you've got a really good coach like Lopetegui, who did well last season with Wolves, kept them up like eight days before the start of the season that he has a fallout with Wolves because they're no not money. buying players because they've got FFP. no money because of FFP. Yeah. So he takes the job. Everyone's like, I tell you what, Wolves are probably going to get like relegated this season. They are struggling. And then we play in first game of the season go, actually, I tell you what, they're all right. Yeah. And you see it, look at the table now. So to your point and earlier on... their players as well. <laughs> exactly. To your point earlier on, he's a very good coach. He did uh, an episode of Monday Night Football earlier this season. I was really Yeah, everyone was loving it, yeah. Really, really impressed with him. Speaks really well. But it's a... Uh, it's a bit of a misleading story, I will say. Because, it is, because yeah. I, I think it's exactly, it's a play on words. And obviously the way you package that, you know, that article, that story gets the sensationalism. It gets everyone talking and it gets the wealth factor in your, um, in the international break when it's a bit dry. And let's, let's be real here, whether we like it or not, Mark Ogden's editors at ESPN will be patting him on the back. He's done his job. He's done his job, which is find some sources that are telling you this, whether we think it's going to happen or not. Go with it, package it, get everyone talking about it. Done his job. Everyone's talking about this piece for Mark Ogden, ESPN. Dave Lawson was on Sky Sports referring to Mark Ogden and bigging him up, saying Mark Ogden is close to Man United. He knows a lot of people in there. I've seen Mark Ogden a lot. Like he is, in, he's in that, he's in that same conglomerate as the Luckhurst, the the Simon Peaches, the Simon Stones, and the. Chris Wheelers and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? So they're all in that same, you know, Sammy, Sammy Mockball as well. He's in there. Um, they're all in there. So he's he, he's in that. Now, it is, I think we have to talk about it in a hypothetical as well. Like when these things happen, we can't see a lot of truth in them because we're like, well, hang on. Like you just said, Darren, hang on. This guy's leading a great charge with Wolves. Does he want to be Eric Ten Hag's? number two or when we get a new manager does he just yeah, want to come even, in a bit does he want to go backwards but then again yeah. it's at man united so you know i can't see that happening but if you're just talking about a pure hypothetical man united are trying to build a new coaching structure mm. and gary o'neill is going to be one of the coaches that's bloody oh, good yeah be great <laughs> yeah. he's a really good brilliant. coach yeah but that's not realistic unless gary mm. o'neill shocks us and like the opportunity was too good to turn down to be a coach at Man United to replace Benny McCarthy, yeah. like it was just then, too good to turn down. And or, also, you know, yeah. what's his name's leaving? Uh, it's going to Minnesota, isn't he? Um, Eric Ramsey, yeah. Eric, Eric Ramsey. Oh, I just, it was just too good to turn down to not take Eric's job from Wolves. Yeah, <laughs> it's just because also as well, if you looked at United's what? backroom staff right now, like you men mentioned, Mitchell, Mitchell van der Gaag, Benny McCarthy, someone like an Eric Ramsey who's now left. 
I mean, uh, there had been rumours, didn't there, about Van der Gaard maybe going back to Ajax. But I think most of them, if you offered them a Premier League head coach job, they would go, thank you very much. Yes, yes I'm going to take 100%. that. Like, they just, He's it, just it, really sought after jobs, man. To manage yeah, exactly. Big deal. Exactly. So it just it just doesn't make really sort of any, any sense. I mean, sense. yeah. What I, about I, I, Owen? I think, the, what, sorry, or, just the bigger one. What about just the head coach the, job? Under Southgate, yeah. What they've done the Southgate thing, which we're like is just stupid. What if it's that? But the, the report isn't actually saying that. The report is aiming more towards coaching. So. Well, it says it says it everything, that? doesn't it? It says we don't know what role they would be offering him. They what say, if it was so. the big one? And you lot in the comments, one? just as a discussion one before Owen goes, what if it was for the big one? Um, well, it would still be the same, wouldn't it? It would still be the same as. Uh, first of all, I think Gary Neville's a much because he would be for that. He's a <laughs> yeah, well, of course, but he's a far <laughs> superior coach to Gareth Southgate. Don't get me wrong there. And yeah. and to be honest with you, if uh, Gareth Southgate leaves after the Euros and Gary O'Neill has been linked to the job at England, I'd be like, yeah, fine, I'm I'm happy with that, no problem. I think he's a really good coach. Yeah, that's true. That's Again, true. He, when he when he, when he was talking um, on that Monday Night Football, he was essentially saying that his philosophy is, I want my team to play a certain way in my head. I've got this way I want my team to play. I'm not naive enough to realise that, no disrespect to Wolves and the players that I've got, they can't do it. Yeah. So what I've got to do, <laughs> yeah. so what I've got to do is, in my, I've got to figure out how far I can downscale my vision to either what these players can do and what's enough to, to win football, football matches. So I thought, I've, and it was, again, it was very impressive. But... Again, we're talking about Manchester United, the the manager will soon to become the head coach role. You would look at someone like an Eric Ten Hag and go, well, I think Ten Hag's still a superior coach to Gary O'Neill. And Gary O'Neill has a massive step up. Wolves to Man United. You know, it's uh, he's he's still got that next step to go, doesn't he? Of no disrespect to Wolves. He's got to go up to another, uh, a bigger club. So no, 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 I wouldn't. I still wouldn't be like like people keep saying with the whole Ten Hag thing, isn't it? It's like who do you replace him with? If there was a name out there that feasibly you could go, well, I can kind of see why Ineos would be interested in that because he's such a great, you know, such a great option. But it doesn't really feel like that, does it? At the moment, it does feel like everyone's kind of equal to or less than when it comes to Eric Ten Hag. And yeah. as we said the other day, there's ten games left of the Premier League season, two games left in the FA Cup one you know if we beat Coventry and um it's not the time is it it's not it's not the time it's not the time for it so but I'm a big fan of Gary O'Neill I wouldn't um that wouldn't be opposed for him to be the next England manager and I legitimately mean that we said that for a while I think he's a really good coach yeah he is a really good coach and what he's doing under I've, he's up there for one of the managers in the crop one of the managers of the season um of course the people who get the big honors and if Villa get into the top four and, you know, if Pep wins four in a row and there's, if Arsenal win their first one in 20, like there's so many things that would overshadow the job that Gary yeah. O'Neill's done. But um, he's, he's the job, like you said, I echo everything you said. And I I never had Wolves to go down in terms of the players that they've got as a starting eleven. I just never thought that. I just thought, how are they going to ever be worse than Burnley, Wolves, uh, Burnley, Luton and Sheffield United? Never, ever saw it. But I never expected him to be ninth. I'm, you know, and we've seen it by playing against them twice. We actually played really well against them in the second time and should have blown them away. Yeah. But, you know, fair play to them. They found a way to be more competitive second half and take the game to us. And then we had, you know, super Cobby to to come through and win us the game in the second half. Um, and in the first game, in the first game of the season, we should have lost. <laughs> we should have lost. So, yeah. And yeah, it's also, um, it's also like... And it's when it does sort of borderline on the kind of disrespectful when it comes to Eric Ten Hag, like the shiny new yes. toy principle of like Gary yeah, O'Neill again, very good coach, and he's had a, he had he's had two now, I think, fantastic seasons. Mm. But you can't get into the hyperbole of like, oh yeah, he's he's way better coach than Eric Ten Hag. You go, well, really, exactly. Based you know, what? really, re yeah. really, like let's not get yeah. carried away. Oh, yeah, yeah, Wolves did lose to Coventry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if Eric if Eric would have done that, Jesus. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that yeah, we have to we have to um chill out a little bit. Dana Luciano has gifted one membership. Big up to you. Um, we are just under a thousand people watching live, which is great for this part of the show, which is really good, really early. It's gonna be a good show. Um, 150 likes through the door already. So let's get another hundred on top of that and get to 250. Matthew Lynn says, continue the good confident vibes, flex. See your belief in Menu, and he started for England. Yes, we're gonna get to that right now. Um, Tony to Man United next. We'll talk a little bit about that because KG had his big say on that. Have you heard of Ancelotti links? I haven't. 
I haven't. Is that uh, we're not Man United Carlin, as well? We? Another one in there? <laughs> we're not you know? getting Carlin. Man, you just, know what? Chuck him in and all. We're, we're doing, well, a, we're doing just, the rounds this international break. He just Chuck signed a new in. contract at Real Madrid. It's Real, crazy. Real Madrid. Is, have you seen yeah. the team they're getting? Like, it's just I don't, a joke. Yeah, I don't think. It's a joke. No. Yeah. Um, show been a member for 18 months. Big up to you. says, we'd love Gary O'Neill at United. Much, much superior coach to Eric Ten Hag. And we'd implement an actual system within months. Get him in. Wow. He shows not really an Eric Ten Hag fan. Uh, okay, fair enough. Joe Fleming says, I'm um, superior to Southgate. What bullshit? Oh, As yeah. Okay. You don't think he is. What? Or yeah. do you mean, I, Joe, do you mean as in he's not superior to Southgate? What do you mean? Or like, don't so what? Me he is? Don't even get me started. Watching that again last night. Yeah, don't even well, get me started. We're going to get there. Harold says, uh, we have been linked with every manager under the sun. Even my nan was tapped up uh, for the kit manager by Brailsford. She is currently on garden leave, Harold yeah. says. Um, big up to your nan on garden leave. Yeah. Um, Amino says, Gary O'Neill is the English version of Inzaghi. Wow. Interesting. Well, you got your Champions um, League final. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, V33 says, I just want football back. All this rumours during the national break is getting ridiculous. Gary O'Neill. Why not Shaq O'Neill? <laughs> uh, well, we're at it. Yes, V33. I like that one. Exactly. It did and kind of feel like Curry. that yesterday when it came uh, out, didn't it, Flex? When it, it was like, just an, when it was another like, one, another one. Yeah. Owen messaged me, he put surely not with the laughing emojis. Yeah. And I just went, it's getting silly now. It's getting silly. Mm. WJ Barrett comes through. Thank you for the super chat, bro. Really appreciate the support as per usual. You say, uh, remember you all laughed at me when I say Kobe reminded me of the level um, of a young Zizou, Nedved and Iniesta. Who's laughing now? I don't say it lightly. He's a special, special player. Different. Mm. I still wouldn't get to again. We gotta no. be careful. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. But every and this is the perfect segue into Kobe. Um, you know, gets the man of the match yesterday. Yeah. Um, I know there's a few things you want to say. We we started off the flexing KG show. He said we, you know, Kobe will dominate. I I said to Owen, I said, listen, put the title as Kobe will dominate because he's making his debut tonight, and I know he's going to do the damn thing. Owen was like, yeah, agreed. Yeah, he's definitely going to do that. We start the show yesterday. KG just starts talking about something else, and then Kobe goes on to do what he did. So, what's 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 your thing, Owen? What what do you, you said you had a lot to say to say? What's what is it? Well, first of all, yes, you mentioned Kobe Mini got the Player of the Match award yesterday at Wembley yes. in England's two-two draw against Belgium. You can see him right there with it. Oh. Also, after the game, Jude Bellingham said, Kobe Mano is very good. Uh, I know how hard it can be when there is a clamour and people put a lot of pressure on you, but he's definitely a brilliant player. He's going to have an amazing future at Man United <laughs> and hopefully for England as well. And just as a very quick sidebar when it comes to Jude Bellingham, uh, first of all, uh, what player he is, but also... KG speaks, was right about that. He speaks so well. He did the interview yeah. after the game. You forget he's 20. He's 20. Oh, he could be sensational. As well. Between him sensational. And Ah, oh, brilliant. Um, but yes, when it comes to Kobe, uh, Casey's a disgrace, and I don't, uh, I don't say that lightly. Um, okay, because he's probably going to be listening. Uh, good, or he's going to look good. Okay. If you are listening, KG, call in. You tried to call me last night at half eleven and woke me up. By the way, <laughs> so maybe that's KG's why. KG would never call me at maybe, that time because he just knows. I maybe that's that. where it comes from. Well, because last night he, I kept saying to him all day yesterday, I was like, "You got to watch Raw." And he was like, oh, "Yeah, I will." I will. Oh, I will. So he, he does like, late, doesn't he? He started watching it late, and then he was messaging me through his reactions to it. And I, but, but I, but I got to go to bed. I got to get up early to do the show. Yeah. So you know, then I get woken up and it's half eleven. Kg, kg. Well, on my phone he saved as kg bomb bomb. So every time it, <laughs> it goes, call from kg bomb bomb. Call from kg bomb bomb. Oh. oh, you have the thing that reads it out. Oh, yeah, yeah, on. yeah. And uh, so I went. No, I'm not, I'm not answering that. Um, yeah. But yes, he is a disgrace because I don't know where he sits on this. Because well, we do. He told ago, us <laughs> oh, well, a couple of weeks ago. He's like, he's got to go. Got to go. Flex. Oh yeah, he he's did got, say that. He's got yeah. to go. He's got to go. Euros. Put him in. Great experience playing. Kobe. Kobe. And then start off the show last night, and he goes, um, "I've changed my mind. I don't think he should go. I don't want him to go." And then he does a cob along <laughs> as well. Does a cob along, <laughs> and how great he is. And I don't know if he's changed his mind now. I'm not sure. Yeah, because he's done a cob along and then he's got man of the match. I, I, we need to probably watch the last three or four minutes of his cob along to see what his final thoughts were. Because perhaps, perhaps I, I but... bet you he'd be in there saying, Cobby, Cobby on the plane. Oh, no, no, every time, every time I touch the boy, he was like, oh, Cobby, Cobbs, 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 Cobbs. Oh, he nearly scored as well, Cobby. Oh, yeah. 
that's what we'll do. Yeah. Um, but look, last night he was. It, to be honest, it wasn't surprising for me. I think that's maybe the the key thing yeah, is that for all not. of the sort of salty fans that are out there, and there were there were those salty fans yeah. that when he got the call up, he shouldn't be getting it. He's rubbish. He's not that good. He's overhyped. It's only because he plays Stop. Manchester yeah. United. And then you see him last night. You go, no, that's what we're that's no, that's what we're seeing. And it, the pressure doesn't get to him. We spoke about it yesterday, didn't we? When we were saying that, you know, sometimes in other positions, it can be kind of you're in a really good bit of form, purple patch, what have you. Like as a striker, you're just always in the right place, and every shot you take goes in. With Cobby, it is different. He's in the hub. Like you, he can receive the ball under pressure, no problem. I thought it was really interesting seeing him play quite close to people like Phil Foden. Oh, who, I was are, who are who are so good? Oh, he like and he's because of because of the way City play. They're so like one touch play around the corner, tight spaces. It doesn't matter. Just give me the ball. I'll find a way out. And his link up was brilliant, absolutely brilliant with him. And again, he was he was he was a uh, he was sensational. And uh, turns out that his talent or the way that he's playing this season isn't kind of enhanced because he's playing in a really bad Man United side, so he looks good. No, no, no. He, you can mix it with just, the best. And, he's and just this really is good. why. After my, my, you guys know my thoughts. So my initial thing at the start, I think it was on the Trinity, wasn't it? A few weeks back, a few episodes back. I was like, because it was still quite early. I was like, no, nah, I'd be happy. If he goes under 21, it's cool, well, You said don't give them. a new contract as well. You went, you know, Ghanaian parents. Yeah, yeah. Work. I was like, no, nah. I was like, because I just want to, <laughs> you know, I was, I've done, I've, I've done, this is what I'm saying. I've done the full cotton wool settings. Don't give him all the big money yet. Don't gas up his head and. Just keep him, please, because this kid looks like he could be it, man. He could be it. Don't gas him up, send him England. Let's just play it down, United fans, because we've been so bad. We're desperate. We're desperate for somebody like Cobby who we could say, this is our star boy and he is the best in the world. Like, we want to, we're desperate for it. We've had nothing for years. We, I mean, we've had false dawns. We've had the Yanis eyes. We've had Machedas. We've had bloody... What else have we had where we really thought it, like a Jaden Sant? I know it wasn't uh, through our academy, but the one Paul Pogba back again. Like we've had like things that we're going to invest our stocks into is what I mean. Like really get our teeth into and say this will work. We've had Alexis Sanchez. We've robbed Arsenal. RVP 2.0. We've done it again, and we've been shat on every single time. And then obviously Rashi out of the academy. We want to build him up to be the top, 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 world-class top draw, then it's like we've had to realign that and go, oh, fucking, he's not really that. He's just good. When he's really good, he's good. But when he's it's, he's not world-class level, you know, uh, we've had Scott McTominay come through the academy under Joe saying, and we're like, then we've seen his limitations versus his strength. So my point was I've, I've been in that, in that situation. But very quickly, very, very quickly, it just became apparent, man. Very, very quickly. And one thing, Owen, what you touched on there, which I wanted to extend upon, that was the thing that took my breath away last night, was him playing with the sick players. Jude Bellingham in and around the area, right? You know when KG said in the, in the uh, show yesterday, he's like, <laughs> when you look at Jude Bellingham, he shouldn't be there. It, like, it looks crazy. It looks like a cheat cut. Like, he's so good. It's, mm. it's, it's a joke. Yeah. And and you can tell that he's he's not playing in England. You can tell he's at the burn. The burn. Like, he's like, give me the ball. Give, he's fully uh, Everything goes through he's me. Fully it's fully He's, he's just 20 years old, but he's, he's a man. It's, he's it's a, a you know I mean? yeah. He's fully formed. Yeah. He's complete. So, so seeing seeing him do that, then when Foden was um, in the 10, right, and he was receiving it on the half turn and driving at players and bouncing it off Kobe, and then Kobe was going and getting involved in the edge of the box. I got a bit worried, actually, because they were like putting rough tackles on Kobe. He was holding his ankle. I was thinking, fuck it, get him off. But yeah, when he was having that inter tight. yeah, when he was having that interchange around the box, I'm going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, <laughs> it's not just being deep, and and then when he was sort of shaking off Onana, and a lot of people have sort of praised Onana for his performance yesterday and yeah. said why why he could be the right one, and you know, it's perfect with someone like Kobe because he can get about the pitch and put tackles in, which I, yeah. I get. He's not my my top guy. I've I've been a bit reserved because I don't think he's that great on the ball, but. He does cover a lot. And even when we played against Everton the other week, people were saying it. So, listen, we'll look at that. Mm. Um, but just the, how Kobe played, one bit of it, I wasn't surprised. But then when I saw him doing it, like, for England with them guys, with Rice, with Bellingham, with Fo I'm like, nah, this is different, bro. This is a joke. This is a joke. Yeah. What you're doing is a joke, bro. He's a joke. 
Yeah. And he is the real deal. We can gas him up. He's the real deal, man. Yeah, he is the real deal. And um, this is why I wanted him to be involved in this uh, England's senior squad was because um, I think it was Simon Stone tweeted it last night when he said, you know, player of the match performance by Kobe Mainu. He had an impressive cameo um, in the last game. And now the question of whether or not he goes to the Euros, I think it's kind of answered. It's not even in I, two I mean, games. I don't, yeah, exactly. Games. That's what I mean. So I don't, that's why I want it. That's, and that's why I found it so strange that, yeah. In the first place, he wasn't included because I thought, well, have a look. I mean, we've we've seen it as as oh, fans that watch oh, every see single that. minute. The first half bit, that bit in the lead up to the penalty was a joke. He's got Tillemans on his back and he thinks, oh, he's just going backwards. No, I'm going to go forward. He changes the whole dynamic of the attack, and that's how Jude can play the ball through to Ivan Tony. Yeah, yeah. He makes again, that again, uh, and that's why. Fucking up. again, I, I thought it was just. Logical, because we because we've watched every single minute he's played for Manchester United, and maybe that and maybe that's where I'll give the the ops a bit of the benefit of the doubt, or the haters a bit of a benefit of the doubt. That maybe that's what they don't see. They don't see every single minute, right? They don't see every single minute of him. They just see us talking about it on social media. So maybe that's why they think that. But yeah, if you, have you to watch see him it. play. But if it. you watch him play for ninety minutes and see what he can do, or last night wasn't full ninety, but you see him play for the majority of the game, and you see every single pass he makes and what have you. Then you do realise that it's not, it's not hyperbole. Now I I would go back to the super chat earlier on, uh, young Zidane. Well, I, yeah, <laughs> let's be sure. let's let's be careful. But um, it, it would seem ridiculous to not include that talent um, in a in a competition oh, that you're looking to win. Goodness. That would make that would make no sense to me. Oh, round the corner because I saw the second half when he was balling. I didn't realise he did this in the first half. Yeah, well, we got, got player of the match. Guy receives the ball, mate. Oh, but the God, thing that does worry me a little bit, Flex. The, the only thing that does worry me slightly, and this is, and this is why I think we as Man United fans have to be careful, not with the praise, but be careful with how, because obviously we're going to be his biggest cheerleader. But we do have to be careful because you're already seeing. I think it was a story from the Mail yesterday saying that you know um, Kyle Saka's got the Nando sauce or whatever. Apparently Nando's already in talks with Kobe yeah, about giving yeah, the Kobe yeah. sauce. And not that you don't want him to have his flowers, you don't want him to have his praise, but you do also then still have to be cautious of. He is 18. Oh. He's, he hasn't played a ton of matches for Manchester United, and we just and again he's English, and we have seen but there is evidence to in the past, even right now with like someone like Marcus Rashford. That English yes. player, that's, them, a, that's a quality player that plays for England, um, that plays for Manchester United and plays well every single week. Like the spotlight and the scrutiny is different. And I think we as fans still do have to protect him. And I think those at United and those around him still have to that's protect the bit him. I was him. Like, about. You know still, about the big contracts, the big that. commercial deals, the big deal. Because look, it will. Oh, you're taking the piss. He did that and then Jude Bender missed. He won the ball yeah, off the miss. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then and then Jude missed that. Um ah, oh, Cobby, you're taking a picture. Sorry, I'm just read what I'm just because I missed the first half. I'm just watching it now. Live reaction. Live. Um, because I saw the second. Um what I was gonna say, yes, that's do you know what I mean? Those big deals, those big commercial deals, because they will come. Nike are going to make him the face of the Phantom boot now. Like they will. Like they did like, do you know what I mean? I think Erling Haaland wears that boot as well. I think Kevin, no, Kevin De Bruyne wears the uh, Dabba Phantoms. But anyway, he's going to be one of the faces of Nike now, naturally. He just is. Yeah. Or another boot deal might cut, you know, someone might come in and give him the mega, mega Puma might come, you know, because they, yeah. you know, Skechers might cut, you know, there, there's these new brand, other brands of Nike and Adidas don't just dominate the market now. There really is a lot more out there. Um, so it's going to come, the big endorsements, exactly. And it's about how does he take that in his stride and, you don't want to liken him to Jude Benham because, like we said, Jude Benham's a different stratosphere with what yeah. he's doing. But when Jude was 17, 18, he was it's a similar thing in terms of dominating the games. Like, I mean, Jude was was he 16 and 17 when he played at Birmingham, innit? And then he went to yeah. Dortmund at 17 yeah. 18. I think also as well though, with, with Bellingham, this is and this is where it's it's it is a case by case. They are different place. players, completely yeah, well, different players. Not necessarily the different players. I'm parking that to one side. I'm just talking about the scrutiny and the spotlight on them. Yes. Jude Bellingham's a very strong personality. Like I said, when you hear him talk, how yeah. impressive he is with how he talks and how forthright he Beyond is his years. And, and how mature he is, you go. 
that guy can handle anything that's thrown at him because we've yeah. seen it. he did go abroad straight away, went to Borussia Dortmund, and he had every club in the world going, we'll take you. And he went, Natch, I'll go to yeah. Dortmund. When he could have gone to United, he could have gone whenever yeah. he went, no, this is the right place for me because he's, yeah. he's got the right people around him. Then he goes to Real Madrid already. You know, you see him interacting with uh, Vinny Jr. He's already speaking Spanish. He's already doing interviews yeah. in Spanish. Because, again, he, he can handle all of it. He can yeah. handle all of it. It's not a problem. He takes it in his stride. And I'm not saying that Cobby can't. Maybe he can. But I think, again, we as fans and we as a club, particularly with the English press, as we've seen it, how they are, we just need to be like, you know, let's, let's not too much too soon. Because you do run the risk of when you make someone the – just golden child of the generation every single week. We've got to be, we've got to be careful, basically. Yeah. We've got to, we've got to be careful. Yeah. No, we do. We do. And the gas that's going to come with it now he's got in the England, like it's like you said, other fans jump on board now where unanimously the player's sick. So like it was very easy with Jude Bellingham. He's very likable. Same as Saka, you know, once he started doing it at the Euros or the World Cup, it's like, pff, don't care who you are. Don't care who you support, mate. You've got to rate Saka. End of. Like, and I think Kobe is is it is going to turn into that, whereby he's loved by all fan bases because you can just see you can't hate on the kid. Good temperament, you know. I mean, nice kid, speaks well, plays amazing football. There's doesn't wind opposition players up, doesn't you know chuck it to people. You know, not a horrible. Player. You can't do anything but like the kid. Mm. <laughs> it's just as simple and even as that. That with Saka, it's like, and this is going to sound disrespectful to Arsenal, but in the sense of like. You know, Bukayo Saka, he's got a lot of spot, he's got spotlight and scrutiny, but he plays for Arsenal, not Manchester United. Like, it is different. Like, that we've seen what it's like. It is different it, historically. You can see it. So, I think that absolutely should go to the Euros. I think there's a strong, I don't, I'm not going to be shocked still because that first lineup of the Euros, I don't, who's, I don't know who our first game's against. The group's now confirmed in Serbia. Not. Um, Serbia, first game, it's going to have Jordan Henson in the midfield if he's fit flex. Yeah. So, don't be shocked. Um, if co if we're know, having a conversation, I, I tell know. you now that conversation of the Euros still could be the whole know. like, ah, oh, why is he not playing Cobby though? Cobby's on the bench, blah blah blah. Don't trust him. I don't know. I, I there's listen. There's a, there's completely loads of reasons to not trust Gareth Southgate to not put Cobby Manu in there, but we found out so many answers by him being there with Rice Bellingham, Manu. Mm. So many, so many, and that was the only decision. The only problem that is there is Gareth Southgate might, he might do something crazy. He might be like, well, between Saka and I'm not going to compromise my left-hand size. Uh, Saka or Foden has to start. One has to sit because that midfield was so balanced. But Foden he'll, is really good in the 10. He'll so maybe he's, he'll but I don't think Henderson That's will what... start. I think he'll either go, I think he'll either go, Saka keeps on the right and he'll go Rice, Bellin and Foden. Um, or... I think he does it. I, I I think he does. I think he's in the squad, but I don't know how much he'll play. To be honest, I just think mm -hmm. when push comes to shove, when it comes to Gareth Southgate, and he and even he, he'll consider like playing like you know, Bellingham. He his if his midfield was like Bellingham, uh, Rice, and Foden, whatever. In his mind, that's him being really risky. You know, he'll be like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm being very risky there. You know, there's yeah. too many too many attacking players. I mean, this is a guy that in the last Euros, he that it was Rice and uh, Phillips. That's the that's yeah. the two because that's yeah. two defensive midfielders. That's what he wants. Yeah, so he wants. Yeah, but he may he might he might shock us by thinking this team's and and he knows this is his last throw at the dice as well. Maybe he will. But everything does point towards Gareth Southgate being Gareth Southgate. I agree. It does point towards that, but I wouldn't I wouldn't rule it out. Um. Right, I tell you what we do need to do. There's 1,400 people watching, by the way, halfway through the show. Banger of a show. Good numbers. We've got the 250 likes in the bag. 500 now. Full steam ahead to 500, guys. Let's take a second right now to even push past 300 because, actually, we've been engrossed in conversation. We've got super chats to read out. We've got members chats to read out. We've got some of your comments in the chat to read out and more things to talk about. Um, but, actually, with nearly 1,500 people watching and over 250 likes right now, it's full steam ahead to 500 likes. So let's get that in the bag whilst we read out the rest of the Super Chats. Um, Joe says, not in any way is he better than Southgate. Talking about uh, Gary O'Neill. Fair play, that's what he believes. The center of the first cracker said, if we don't improve our squad and if Kobe continues to play with Rice and Bellingham for England, won't that push him to make a move to a better team? Well, again, this is another thing at Man United that Ineos have to be aware of, which is why it's good why we're 
changing now because again you're right we also need to give these players coming through who are top players the environment and the things they need as they progress in their career and become better to know that they can achieve what they want to achieve in their career at Man United. We have to change that. That's, what, think, that's the problem yeah. that they got with Saka. That's the problem that Trent had. Not problem, but that's what that's the club. That's the job of the club to nurture their youngsters. To It's not just enough to say you come from us so we just expect you're going to be a one-club man. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't yeah. work like well, that. Well, United, in a sense, yeah. have been somewhat fortunate too because... And this is where it gets back to like and some of the salty fans. You go, if if Kobe Mainu was this terrible, overhyped footballer, why for the past decade, and since he was again like eight years old, have Manchester City every single year tried to sign him? Because there are multiple reports out there, even as even as recent as a couple of years ago, of them going to like Kobe, hey, would you be interested? You know, because they know. Like, for, you can criticise Man City for a lot of things, but they certainly know talent at a youth level. Look how many people have come through their doors. My goodness me. So if mm. he was terrible, they wouldn't be sniffing around uh, yeah. Kobe, would they? No, exactly. Um, Tabrez says, um, Modric's regen was man of the match yesterday. There, I said it. Tabrez was saying the Modric thing yesterday. WJ Barrett says, um, I watched the Flexing KG show and he has to go to the Euros. KG is moving mad saying don't take him. We may win and I want Kobe to be part of it. That's why Owen said he's a disgrace and a cheat. H, mm -hmm. thank you for the super chat, says, as an Arsenal fan, um, it makes me sick that United have Maynou. Top talent. He's a mix between Gundogan and Moussa Dembele. That's one I haven't seen the concoction of in that cocktail. <laughs> yeah. um, Joe's, uh, just hope um, I'm not watching um, another Wiltshire and he has a long career, hopefully not at United. Some good points there, because again, that's what I mean. You know, I saw that. That was starting to come to fruition on social media. Oh, Maynou or Wiltshire. And that's where it's like, Oh man, just leave Kobe alone. Let's not keep doing all the. Let's just gas him as him. Don't compare him, because Wiltshire was pff, when he come onto the scene, he was unbelievable. And literally, mm. the Arsenal fans actually probably got a good good take on this because that when you looked at Wiltshire at that point, so young doing what he was doing, you went pff, going to the top, mate. Don't care what you say. Yeah. That kid's in, that he's insane. He's insane. He was running games, bro. He was playing against Barcelona. Prime Barcelona. I was going to know you're going to bring up that game because that's the game they always bring up, isn't it? But then the one, eventually, bro. eventually, and this was, and this is my but thing on injuries. Of injuries. Yeah, this is my it, thing on injuries you know with mean? it. Like, I understand that you have to weigh up talent and injury in specific games, but when it's like three or four years since that game happened and he hasn't played a ton of games, you sort of go, well, then it becomes, well, what have you done for me lately kind of situation, isn't it? Which Absolutely. No, no, but the lead that up the to thing. that was oh, yeah. Bobby. But that's in the England then... squad. We're like, fucking God, this kid, Jack Wilsh is the one. But He's going also, to be the one. That's also the same and time. Three years later, going. he's not. Same time earlier, you know, you've got, to, you've got to protect him. And I know it's this weird phenomenon, isn't it, of this desire to compare any good player to someone else, isn't it? They're, they're exactly. this. They're this guy. They're that guy. Oh, they're more like this. Why can't they just be themselves? Why can't they just be Kobe Mainu? Why can't they just be, you know, Jude Bellingham? Why does it have to be, um, oh, he's the next. He's a bit like Frank Lampard mixed with Steven Gerrard. Or he's a bit like Roy Keane. Or he's actually got the passing style of Xavi. And you go, hey, just, he can be Kobe Mainu. It's fine. Carve out your own legacy. Yeah. Um, who is at home? Bomb. Um, loving the show, uh, boys. You make it worth staying home, says Craig Block. Oh, he must be watching from home. Big up to you, bro. Yeah. Big up to you, Craig. Appreciate that. Um, WJ Barrett says, also, Kobe um, had the commentator gassed. Um, I didn't hear the commentary, actually. Um, but where, was that what was going on? Were they just gassed? Like, just so excited. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, it was, who was commentator? It was Steve Bauer and uh, Rob Green was the commentator okay. for Channel 4 last night. Yeah. Um, WJ Barrett says, he will start Kobe because he wants the United job. Oh, and V33 says, fix the damn club finances Finances in the next three to four years. Go and get Jude as an annual premium buy, like a big boy club. Um, Jude, Mainu in a CDM, our core is set. I mean, yeah, we're living in dream world there. We're never going to be able to get Jude Benham no. from there. Um, Andy H, been a member for 21 months. Right up there, Andy H. Big up to you. Yeah. Gold emoji. We said to Josh, there needs to be a higher tier. Yes. Um, just wanted to say thanks for all the entertainment the UV family brings. Just, just love, just love from Andy H. Yeah, big thank up. You. Really, really appreciate that, man. Um, there was a bit. Oh, and I don't know if you've got it actually because I'm kind of on the fly here about just obviously because we're out of the international break. 
some injury updates or you know plays we can expect back. There's a bit on Ganacho. Um, Scaloni, Argentina manager, was saying um, Ganacho and Carboni are the boys who can who can contribute, and we will see in the future if they will be with us. But I am happy. It's not easy to play with this shirt or with these opponents who make your life difficult. So by by all chance, if we just call, do a little round. Round the round the round the uh, teams, you know, Ganacho's had a good had a good stint. Yeah, good I mean, minute. so much talk about Cobby, obviously, throughout yeah. this international break, maybe because it's a bit closer to home. But you know, ganacho has been playing for Argentina, brilliant um, for his development, man. And yeah, uh, Hoyland playing for for Denmark as well. So it was uh, Christian Eriksen. But those players that we're talking about a lot at the moment, you know, your 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 met Cobby Maynus, your Alejandro Garnachos, your Rasmus Hoylands, all play stars. as well, <laughs> exactly. And then when you talk about uh, injuries as well and players coming back we're, we're coming out of an international break with a uh, Lissandra Martinez hopefully ready to go maybe for the weekend maybe for for next week we've got a Mason Mount that returned just before the international break as well so it's been a couple of extra he'll weeks um yeah. for him as well so he'll be available too obviously Harry Maguire dropped out but um yeah some players and then obviously before the international break anyway you had Juan Bissaka come back so he's had another couple of weeks too um, like I said, Hoyland's got some time under his belt as well. So we're the squad's actually for United anyway this season in fairly decent shape coming into uh, this last stretch of ten games. It's just a case of how long can they stay <laughs> in fairly mm -hmm. decent shape, I suppose. But it's exciting. Look, we got Brentford at the weekend. It's, it's it's amazing how long two weeks can feel, isn't it? You know, in one breath, it doesn't feel like any time's passed at all. But then when you do think about like the Liverpool game, it does seem quite far away now, doesn't it? You go, right, okay, boom. Got to focus on uh, the league because we'll go again. as many people have pointed out, obviously that was the, the game against Liverpool was in the FA Cup, but if we were to get a negative result against Brentford, it would really dampen the mood again. You'd be like, oh God, right, well, now, what are we going to do now? Yeah. So I just now think, we've got a lot of positivity. I think we've, we've yeah, really exactly. got positive, positive vibes, not just with the Liverpool game, but now we've got, you know... Uh, the international break that's happened and Cobby's going to come back 10 feet yeah. tall. Garnacho's going to come back 10 feet tall with most importantly, um, Hoyland's going to come back with more minutes in the tank after only coming back against Liverpool. So he needed more minutes. Mason Mount's going to be revitalised more minute, not, not more minutes, sorry, more, more training, more training for Alessandro. He's got like, it's just, it's just a positive vibe for, you know, Wambasaka, two weeks mm -hmm. more training. It just helps. It really, really helps. So Varane, two weeks rest. Like yeah. it just, you know, how, how obviously Harry Maguire's injured. Hopefully it's not for too long, but it's just, um, it actually, international break can be really shit, but actually this one's been a good one for us. This yeah. one's been a really good one for us with the things that have come out of it. Daniel Luciano has gifted five memberships as well. Five memberships. Five. Love Tell me he didn't just say that. Yes, I did just say that. And also what I'm going to say is we're at 360 likes. Still want to push for that 500 guys. We're at 360 likes. Let's get to the 400 really quickly and then we can push for an extra 100 towards the end of the show really, really easily. Um, Nem Green says, uh, morning, boys. Um, being ghost due to family bereavement. Sorry to hear that, bro. Um, sorry to hear that. Um, on Kobe, um, does Eric Ten Hag deserve credit for his development and something to support and build for Eric Ten Hag future? Absolutely deserves credit for his development. Of course he yeah. does. Yeah. He absolutely does. He came in, saw Kobe was coasting. In the under twenty threes or the under twenty ones, whichever it was, it might be. I think it might be the under eighteens. Um, yeah. And said, "Get him out of there. He's he's better than that. Let's push him." And the roadmap was there from last season. We saw that at the Calvary Cup final. We saw it in preseason. Mm -hmm. The roadmap was there. That like this has been a to, to Eric Ten Hag. This ain't gonna be a surprise. Some bits of it might be of like, yeah, like yeah, oh, yeah. I didn't know get an England team that quick and yeah, England match. Yeah. But in terms of playing for Man United. Yeah, they could be surprised by because you never really know what it's like when you start giving young players starts. Mm. They might struggle a bit. They got to take them out, but then but Cop, they might be like, we are surprised that he's been so good so quick. Where we have to keep playing him, like we have yeah. to play him next to Casemiro. Ten Hag said it in uh, one of one of his presses. He said it in one of his presses. Um, and I know that sometimes with young players, particularly really good young players, they can people try and absolve any of the credit to the manager, don't they? Because they say, oh, it doesn't matter who was there. They'd have been successful anyway. And you go, well, that's not necessarily the case because you do have to be quite bold enough to put them in the team, especially at Man United. I mean, obviously, I know we've got a great history of bringing three players through the academy, but that decision to include them in um, 
in in first team action or start them, particularly nowadays when there's so much money on the line, it's a it's a risk and it's a, it's a, it is a bit of a gamble. Now you could argue circumstances have kind of facilitated it as well with the injuries and the absences and what have you, and that's true. That is true too. But um, of course, he does deserve, deserve credit for that. Um, he deserves credit for it with Alejandro Garnacho as well. Last season, yeah. he, was, he played him. Now he plays him all the time. And as I mentioned, he did mention one of his press conferences. He said, oh, I remember when I was playing Garnacho, I was playing Kobe Manu, and people are like, oh, is that too much too soon? He's like, now you're saying you should be going to the Euros. So can't be that bad, can it? So he absolutely does deserve credit for that. And that, and that is one thing. When you're weighing up the pros and cons, and I'm sure any are, they're weighing up the pros and cons of Eric Ten Hag. That is a pro that's in his column, isn't it? Of He's not afraid to play young players. He's not afraid to put young players in and give them a go. And we're talking about, aren't we, uh, after that uh, that Liverpool game, how United's got this exciting young core in their team of like Hoyland, of Garnacho, of Kobe Mainu, and as you go up, um, up as well. So it's very exciting. Very, very exciting. So he does deserve credit for it. Yeah, he does. Um, Danny Luciano has gifted another five members. Another? Tell me he didn't just say that. Mental. It's a big show today, guys. We are at 400 likes show. as well. Super Chat's flying in as well. Joe Fleming with a big Super Chat says, Southgate brought Rice and Phillips in before anyone even knew who, um, who they were. Started Saka on a regular before anyone who uh, knew who he was. Started Bellingham from early before people really um, were sh- really sure. Disrespect. Look, Does Joe's a big Southgate fan. Things, Does, Is that true, though? Well, in this, so what's he saying? He brought in Rice and Phillips before saying, anyone even knew yeah. who they were. Well, you did. I would say people we didn't knew know who, who they, they were. were. <laughs> yeah. Didn't when, know who they was. Whenever a player gets called up to an international oh, They were young and aspiring, though. They were yeah, young that's and true. aspiring. Yeah, that's true. But it wasn't based off like a, a hunch, was it? I think it was because they were in very good form in the Premier League, wasn't it? That's really what it was. So, so, then, Rice, so then why are we surprised then that he's not Declan, going to do the main new thing? Declan then? Rice was, he showed us that he does. I was surprised. But that's the thing. But he didn't, did he? He, he did it because players dropped out. That's also, you can't ignore that context. Yeah, but Rice that. wasn't. Rice has always been there. No, but that's, that's, why, that's why he's saying, we, but, but, but with the with the Kobe Maney one, he didn't pick yeah. him up just out of the blue. He picked, he picked, there was going to be under 21s. And and look, some people would say, rightfully so, because he'd never done under 21. So they thought that's yeah. a natural fit for him. And let's be honest too. Had there not been a European Championship this summer, he'd have probably stayed in the under-21s because they'd have been like, exactly. okay. They need the to have a look at him. him. And they've done but, it. But, but it's only because of those injuries that he got in, right? And when it comes to that super chat about saying, brought in Rice and Phillips before anyone else knew who they were, Declan Rice was playing regularly in the Premier League for a West Ham side that was pushing Champions League football at that time. Remember those two seasons under David Moyes? They're pushing Champions League with uh, Calvin Phillips. That's Bielsa's, what, first couple of seasons in the Premier League, that first season when they actually did all right. And everyone's like, oh, Bielsa ball. The, the was first it season in the league. league. It was the first. It was the first. Yeah, the first exactly. Season you had. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you give, in the same vein that I would give uh, Eric Ten Hag credit for bringing players in, of course, I'll give a manager praise like Gareth Southgate for calling them up. But I don't know if it's like he picked them up out of the blue because that's just not the reality of the situation, it's is it? Sound, sounding like your normal Southgate agenda, to be honest. Hey. Sounding like you don't want to. Basically, Joe's making a good point saying he's got a track record of bringing young players into the team. And he's, Yeah, but also, he's, he's, yeah, but he's also got a track record of keeping the same players in the team oh, when they've not been playing well. Oh. Sounds like the thing you say when people talk about Eric. You say, why can't you just say this one thing? You don't have to just bat it straight back to I that. Did. I did. You just I give the props. I literally, just said, I literally just said I will okay. give a manager praise for calling him up, but to suggest that he picked these guys out of like oblivion, no one knew who they were, and it, oh, he's always given these young players a chance. It's just not fact factually accurate, is it? It's not. Okay. He's given well, a lot of young players think, a chance. What do you think? Give your opinion. I think I think Joe's got a point. I think Joe. I think you're right. That's why you're right to to give credit where the credit is due, because there is a bit of credit due there. He yeah. has brought them players into the squad. And, of course, Declan Rice is not going to say anything bad about Southgate. None of the players will. But you can see he's very thankful for him to enlighten his England career, um, pushing him on, kicking him on, giving him that responsibility. But Declan Rice is a mainstay in the England team because of how good he is. You know, I get that. Of course, he can't not be because he's just one of the best defensive midfielders in the world. Saka, same thing. But also, we can't just 
say it's hard with international management because when the when the manager picks the right player, it's like, well, yeah, well, Saka's been amazing. What do you mean, mate? So, so you don't get any praise for that. But to bring it all together and then make a competitive team, which he has done, he does deserve a bit of praise for that. He does. Just like he deserves the criticism for not getting over the line. I do. It, it, both can be true. Did you see uh, a competitive team against Brazil in the week or last week? No, in the friendly. We always do that in friendlies. It's been a competitive games in all of. There's been a competitive team in all of the tournaments Gareth Southgate's been in. Yes or no? Well, no. They haven't competed. Well, if you they failed, what do you, what do you they define failed, as competing? What do you define as competing? Got made the, made the nation believe. Everyone's wearing waistcoats. Everyone's saying we could do it. Football's coming home. Fever. Did we? Fever. Uh, AG fever. Did we compete in the uh, the Euro twenty twenty final? We did up until the point we was um, drawing. Gareth Gareth Southgate shut the bed. Started the game on the front foot. Competed we did for, for two minutes. We did for two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Competing against uh, Croatia. Amazing, amazing free kick. Doing well. Shut the bed. DNA of England, though, isn't it? Been happening since, you know. Oh, so let's just not blame him. Let's just, let's just no, not blame he's, him. He's just, he's just it, part of it. He's part of a deep. He's part of a deep. Let's just not blame him. He's just not, part of a deep, a deep a systemic root let's of not, England. He's been there for years. You can't blame him. can't blame him, then. He might have been shit for 10 years. You can't blame him. You can't You can't blame the manager if, you know, for picking the team and setting out the tactics. Correct. Get rid of Eric then. Get rid of can't. Difficult. Get rid of Eric. Can't, can't blame manager. All his fault. We've been shit for no. 10 years. Buying shit players and that. It's all, all, all Eric's fault. It's all Eric's fault. Because yeah. I'll tell you what, every manager since Sir Alex Ferguson, we've been absolutely brilliant. Eric's the one problem. It's the manager. Yeah, there's goalposts. 19, 19, over, 1966. Man. All the way till... To, uh, my maths ain't even good. How many how many years has that had since it ain't come home? 40 years? 50 years? How much, how much oh, what, do you, what, do you think, what do you think it is, Flex? 66, 76, 86, 96, 2006. So just short of 40 years. 49 it's years. <laughs> it's way longer than 40 years, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. 50, yeah. So it's, yeah. So if it was 20, nearly, 26, nearly, 60. What, nearly 60 years. But it's Gareth Southgate's fault. But the whole nation hasn't won in 60 years. He said nearly 40 years a second ago. Yeah. Well, it's more. There you go. It's more. Add 20 more <laughs> years on. Add 20 more years on. So I'll tell you what. It's the guy who's got us the closest in that time. It's all his fault. Blame him. Not not the other previous managers in the other 55 years. No, it's none of them. Nah. Because our DNA is winning. This is, well below, this is well below our standard because we should be winning because we've got a history of doing that. Well below here's our one standard. Flex, here's one flex then. Right, we played Belgium last night. And uh, it's not the Belgium of like five years ago, 10 years ago, or what have you, is it? Clearly. Now, no. that golden generation for not winning well. anything, yeah? Who gets a lot of the blame for that not working? Yeah, Martinez. But they've never won anything so flex, but that's just, that's a DNA, so we can't blame Martinez. And, uh, and he was good enough. For and now he's got Portugal. Got his, and his reward, because people realise actually there's something there, is he's now manager of Portugal. Can't blame him, though, can we? If so, Bowser we'll never won anything, leave, it's not really We'll let spot. Southgate go, and we'll let him can't. let him make yeah. someone else's team. Well, go. they got rid of him. They got And they got rid of him because, you know, actually they realised, well, with that group of players, the maybe friendly. we should have done, Let's see how good maybe they're doing we should have done a bit more. Maybe we should have done a bit more. Euros. They won the Belgian Euros. The Belgian FA went, actually, you know, maybe we need something different. Absolutely. Maybe we need something different. Because with that group of players, they, we should yep. have done more. Even though we've never we done anything done in the more. past, we should have done more. But are Belgium going to be favourites for the Euros? By your logic, we'll see how they do. Belgium, Belgium team now. We'll see how they do. Mm. We'll see how they do. Did Very they win last night? I'm sorry, last time I checked, England drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you see? Uh, do you see that again? Average Belgium side. Yeah. Do you see that? Some good players. We say we want half of them. See Lukaku's cross. Outside the boot. Yeah, you see Lewis fucking dunk. Shit. Twice. Twice in a couple of weeks. Oh, he's better than Lukaku. Maguire. Like, this is why Maguire shouldn't play. But Lewis dunk shit. There you go. Deserve your hype as well, by the way, if you want to get on that. Twice in a want? couple of weeks against Lukaku. Twice in a couple of weeks against Lukaku, mate. Crap. But again, Harry Maguire shouldn't play. What's he done wrong for England? Someone tell me. Agendas, mate. Agendas. It was like then Mori, why don't want to be here? Mori when he's um when Southgate refused to pick him after he won the league 
That was yeah. good, wasn't it? Yeah, well, because the other guys had let him down. Stones and Maguire won the league. Stones and Maguire, mate. Yeah. Oh, Ashley Young, Ashley Young won the league. Ashley Young won the league in us. Should he get back in the team? It's going to be a, a fun because there's better there's better left backs than him and his age. Tamori was a young English centre back that won the league in Italy. Completely Is different. Tamori better than Harry Maguire. Not thinking going on. It's not, it's not it's not sound. Yes, is it? You should be in the squad. Should be in the squad. He wasn't even put in the squad. Should be in there. For, like, said a loose dunk. Yeah, I agree with that. But when it comes again, to starting, this was closer to the time as well. This was closer to the time. He wasn't even in the squad. That's a disgrace. Yeah. He had to get that hat trick, says Daniel Luciano. Joe Fleming says, and all of that has taken a lot of bottle facts, says Joe Fleming. I'm with Joe. I'm with Joe, man. Yeah, you can wait. Where are you waste cutting the summer flex? <laughs> and see, and you know what's funny? It's uh, Owen said, I'll be there waiting in the summer. See agenda. I just want us I to didn't... lose straight away. And you, you, know what's wild is? you know what's wild you want is us to lose. You, know what's wild? you know what's wild with that is I never said that. Yes, that you is... did. I never the same said, way I don't cough like this. I never. That's yeah. completely different. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. hey, that's libelous. Okay, you're saying things <laughs> I didn't say. Okay, I, I, I said on KG's channel last night because yeah, yeah. KG was KG said to me, goes, you must feel very vindicated right now. I was like, who cares about that? Like, I didn't want to be one of those fans. You see this sometimes with United fans at the moment. It's almost like they'd rather be proved right and United be shit. You'd be like, I'd rather be proved wrong and my team win. I don't want to be right about that. A Gareth Southgate, I'd be really happy if England won the Euros and be like, I didn't see it coming. Fantastic. No, you wouldn't. But no, you I would. wouldn't. You wouldn't be happy for Gareth. Of course Gareth. I no, would. Of course I would. No, you wouldn't. Of course I would. No, you wouldn't. Call me crazy, Flex. I'd want my would. country to win. No, no. Yeah, we don't <laughs> want it to be Gareth Southgate to get us over the line because you think he's a shit manager. I, I, you would I, find, you would be like, Gareth well, I tell you what, over the, line. the way that final went, I mean, he should have won that. We play Gareth bloody... Southgate to get over the no, line. You don't. Of course no, I you do. Don't. I want my country to win. I'm no, not going to you... be sitting there like this, going football came home and it's shit. I'm not yes, going to be doing are. that. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. I believe you. Not will. a chance. <laughs> um, Joe Fleming says that the golden generation of players wouldn't even um, play in for England if it wasn't for Southgate. Well, there you go. You know what I mean? 455 likes at the end of the show. Um, we can get up to the 500 on the way out, definitely. Defamation of the highest order, says uh, Rich. We got Rich in the chat. Sefi yes, Jane says, like, nah, let's not get into this. Um, it starts fights and all. Um, Flex is winding Owen up again. Thanks, everyone, for uh, your love and opinions. Thanks for Although, being here. What's stuff. interesting, what's interesting, for that whole, like, Flex is winding Owen up stuff, yeah. Then, did you see him on the Trinity guys last Friday when he goes, I just want to clarify, very serious Flex stuff. I just want to clarify that... I don't want Gareth Southgate as the Manchester United manager. Manchester. Lots, yeah. lots of people have been saying that, and that's not the truth. So here's not winding up tactics, yeah. Eventually, yeah. the heat gets too much. And he goes, no, 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 I wasn't no. saying that. I just don't make it clear him. what I'm saying. Don't I just make him. it clear. Let I just him. make it clear what I'm saying versus what I'm not saying. Do, don't let him get I'm not away saying he should be Man United manager. I'm just saying that he's done good for England. That's what I'm saying. Don't let him get away with it, yeah? Because well, that's what he'll do. not away with it? That's the same way it is. That's what he I will do. He's not good enough to be Man United he'll manager. Stir it up. But give him his props. He'll you won't give him no stir props. It up. He'll stir it up and then he'll be like, no, I was just, you know, I was just, I was just joking or whatever. You won't give him You're any props. Deflecting. deflecting. Will you give him any props? I've said it multiple times, I will. Where it doesn't feel like I'm on. I'm on the, it feels like you're trying to And once to take again, it. we get back into the we get back into the situation where it's what you feel. It's your feeling versus reality. And I tell you what, you and KG, you belong with each other. You're both disgraces. <laughs> KG for Cobby, you for Gareth. I want out. I want out. I'm gone. <laughs> see, look, look, see? Look at that. Look at this. I'm it's right to my it. resignation letter angry. right now. Angry, angry, angry Owen. Um, there was another Joe Fleming super chat in there as we leave. Uh, P.S. I would hate Southgate to be United manager. This is what I'm trying to say, Joe. Apparently, Joe, you can't give Southgate a bit of credit for what he's done for England, but not wanting to be Man United. Do you know what I'm saying? Apparently, you can't. But I'm, I stand with you, Joe. I stand with I resign. You. There you go. That's my <laughs> resignation letter. I resign. <laughs> On that note, can you take us out of the show, please? <laughs> Paper's gone everywhere. <laughs> why do you always get around? You know what you mean, so why do you care? Why don't you just ignore me? Because you know what you mean. You know what just we need to me. do? You know what we need to do? We need to shut the channel down. That's what we need to do. <laughs>
I'm getting off this ship. <laughs> Guys, it's 473 likes. If that doesn't make it 500 likes, I don't know what was. And Joe Fleming says, exactly. Owen to United stand. Here we go. Confirmed. So yeah. It's like what you're saying. Yeah. Where's, where's the old company phone? Get it. <laughs> ah, mate. Uh, on that note, big up to everyone watching. Uh, Steph Jets, love you too, Flex and Owen. Um, Owen is rattled, says um, LM, LM Slive. Um, can we boycott Flex as SLD? Owen to Stretford Paddock, says Jason. Well, actually, what I can uh, do, I forget, I forget I have these powers. Let me see if I can just like get rid of him. I can mute him. There you go. Can do that. I can maybe turn his... Uh, can I turn his camera off? How do I do that? I can hang up, force the user to disconnect. They can always reconnect. Okay, he's gone. Anyway, guys, be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. And uh, we'll be back with uh, more content later on the day. I'll go, get out of here. <laughs>